Good morning, kindergarten. Today is Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. We are three more days until Cassidy's birthday. Her birthday is this Friday. All right, let's begin with our good morning song. So I'll go first and then it's your turn. Here I go. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, KB. Good morning to you. Your turn. Thank you, boys and girls. Let's start our day reading from our new devotional. This devotional is called Nine Fruits Alive. Discover the fruit of the spirit. Nine different fruits because there are nine different characteristics of the Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is, sing it with me, it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. So when the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and lives in you, you start to be these things. You start to be more loving, more joyful, more peaceful, having more self-control, having goodness and gentleness in your heart. So yesterday we learned about the first fruit, which is love. This little boy named Charlie P. Cooper, he shows love by giving hugs to his dad. And I gave you a challenge yesterday to do something loving to your family. And Peyton did. So I want to show you what Peyton did as her act of love. I'm really proud of you, Peyton, for doing this. Hi, Miss Cooper. Today I'm going to give my sister some love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now drop it all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> Peyton, that was so sweet. You showed your sister Presley love by giving her a hug and kiss. I'm sure she felt really loved by, by you. All right, so the next fruit of the spirit after love is love, joy, joy. So that's this fruit, right? Wait, we did the pear yesterday. Okay, it's the apple. Do you see the word joy next to it? So we're going to learn about joy today. It says joy is a fruit you can pass along by singing your favorite silly song. Look at this girl. Look at Charlie. Look at all his friends. They look like they're really, really happy, right? When you're really, really happy, it's called joy. They are having joy by singing silly songs. I know that when we sing Mr. Kell songs, it brings you joy because you're smiling, you're laughing. What are some other things that bring you joy? Can you tell me? Yeah, those are great things you told me. You know what brings me joy? What brings me joy is, of course, when I see you and I see your smiles. But what also brings me joy is going to the beach. When I go to the beach and I see the ocean and I see the waves and I feel the sun, the warm sun, it makes me really, really happy. Well, there are things that make us happy and then we can be the people to make other people feel joy or happy. So what is something today that you can do to make someone else feel happy? If your brother or sister or mom and dad, maybe they're having a hard day, maybe you can be their joy 
you can do something for them to make them feel really, really happy. And if you do, I want, your, I want you to record it and send it to me so I can show all your friends. So again, today, your job is to do a joyful act for somebody. Find somebody in your family and do something to bring them joy, to make them happy. I wonder what you're going to do. Well, let's pray and ask Jesus to help us be joyful or maybe give us, give us ideas of how we can be a joy to others. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Jesus, please fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I can have joy. And please help me bring joy to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, speaking of the word joy, we are going to learn a new memory verse or a new Bible verse. The Bible verse we are learning this week goes like this. It says, count it all joy. So I want you to, with your finger, point to something. So count it all joy. Do that with me. Count it all joy. In the Bible, Jesus says to count everything as joy. So if you go through something really, really hard and it doesn't make you very happy or something sad happens to you, something sad happens to you, Jesus said, says instead of being sad about it, he wants you to have joy. And you're probably thinking, well, that's like the opposite. How can I be happy if something makes me sad? It's because you know that God can turn any bad thing or any sad thing into a good thing, right? We have a God who loves us and cares about us. And when hard things or sad things or bad things come to our life, we don't have to be sad about it because Jesus will turn that bad thing into a good thing. So that's what the Bible verse is today. Ready? Count it all joy, my brothers. So I'm going to point to you. It's like, it's like your friends, your brothers. So count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet. So I want you to look. When you meet trials, Trials are like hard things in life, so you have to go like this, ugh, when you meet trials of various kinds. different There are different kinds of hard things that happen in our life, but whatever trial you have, whatever hard thing you have, you can have joy. All right, let's do it again. Count it all joy, my brothers. When you meet trials of various kinds. Let's do it again, and then we'll do it with the music. And don't worry, we'll keep practicing it every day. Ready? Count it all joy, my brothers. When you meet trials. Oh, sorry. When you meet trials of various kinds. Let's do it again. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Are you ready to do it with the song? Okay, here we go. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing... Let's try it again. Ready? Here we go. Count it all joy. Count it all joy, my brothers, <laughs> when you meet trials... 
I made the mistake. I went like this for counting, but we're not doing this counting. It's this counting. So count it all. Joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Let's do it one more time. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know. All right, well, that's where we're going to stop today with the Bible verse. And now let's review special sounds. So today we're going to do all the special sounds. And we're not going to say the whole thing. We're just going to say the sound, and we're going to do it kind of fast. So, are you ready? Okay. Ready. Steady. Go. Pull. Make sure you do the motions. I want to hear you. Goal. There you go. Pull. I can hear you. Tickles your tongue. Mmm. Doesn't tickle your tongue. Bowl. Coal. Shh. Tur. Fur. A. O. K. I, E, stir, skrr, squa, spur, spool, do the motion, sm, What? Soul. Twa. Sk. Sk. Keep going. Fur. Dur. Gur. Cur, purr. We're on the last set now. Thur, good job. What does A R say? A R. Think of a pirate. R, as in stars. So when I see the letters A-R together, I make a pirate sound. Arr! Can you say that? Good job. And this is the one we learned yesterday. Let's say the whole thing for this one. C-H says ch. As in church. Make a church. Let's do it again. C-H says ch. As in church. Good job. When C and H are together, they make ch, ch, ch. Like cheese. Like chain. Like a uh, check. Like cheek. Ch, ch, ch. Good job. Well, you know how I asked you to write all your special sounds? on flashcards, and then you're gonna time yourself to see how fast you can read them. Well, that's what Evan did. So I wanna show you a video of Evan reading all her special sounds. Here we go. Let's see, oh, before I start it, let's see how many seconds or minute it takes her. Oh, 
took you a minute and 10 seconds. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you, Evan. Good job. And I love that you were the one to write your own special sounds on each card. Good job. Keep it up. You did a minute and 10. So my challenge for you is to do it in a minute and five seconds. See if you can do that. All right. Well, now let's review some sight words that we've learned. So the one I want us to review this week is the word said. Said, go to bed, I said. How do you spell the word said? Like this. Said is spelled S-A-I-D. Said is spelled S-A-I-D. If you really use your head, you can learn to spell I said. Let's do it again. Said is spelled S-A-I-D. Said is spelled S-A-I-D. If you really use your head, you can learn to spell I said. How do you spell said? Can you say it for me? Good job. Now let's do it with the song. S-A-I-D Said A-I-D. Good job. Said. There's another one I want us to review. It's the word of. Can you say of? Of. It looks like the word off. Off, off. But it's the word of. And the song for this went like this. Went like. O and an I have to do do my arms. O and an F of of O and an F of of sounds like a V. No fooling me. O and an F of of. So when O and F are together, that F becomes a V sound, and we go of of. Like what is on top of your table? Do you have cups on your table? Do you have plates on your table? Or what's on top of your head? Are you wearing a hat? Are you? No, because we're inside. Um, do you know what's on top of, of our school? At Lakewood Christian Schools, we have a cross on top of our school. What's on top of the mountains during winter time? Snow, yeah. O, F, of, of. Let's do it with this song now. Let's see if I can find the of song. There it is. O, F, of. Oh, what an F, of, of. Oh, what an F, of, of. 
Sounds like a beat, no more a beat. Oh, and a nap, uh, uh, oh, and a nap, uh, uh, oh, and a nap, uh, uh, sounds like a beat, no more a beat. Oh, and a nap, uh, uh. How do you spell the word of? O F. Of. Good job, boys and girls. Oopsies. All right, we're done with our sight words. Now take out your daily schedule. It's your week five. And today is t -t -t Tuesday. So today you are gonna do your phonics worksheet, page 161 and 162. It looks like this. 161 and the back side is 162. So from now on boys and girls when you do your worksheets, your math, your writing, these phonics worksheets, I need you to turn them into Google Classroom for a grade. So before you would do them and then save them in your packets and then I would I pick them up um, last week to grade them. But now you are going to have your mom and dad take a picture of both sides and upload it to Google Classroom in week five and they will know which one to put it into and it's due on Friday. So if you haven't done that with your math worksheet from yesterday, please do it and do it for this one as well. So first things first, you write your name. First things first, I write my name. First things first, I write my name. First things first, I write my name. Then my teacher's happy. You are going to write your first name and your last name. Okay, when you're done with that, it says to circle special sounds, mark the vowels, read the words, then match the picture to its name. So they actually did the first one for us. So let's look at the picture first. What is it? It's a drill. I say drill. Mm -hmm. There are two words here that look like the word drill. We have to mark the vowels. Circle special sounds. Mark the vowels. Read it and then circle which one it matches. So the first one, how many vowels? Just one. So they gave it a smile. Let's read it now. D, I, L, dill. Sounds like drill, but not quite right. The next one, they circled the special sound dir. They put a smile over I, and now let's read it. Dr, ill, drill. That is the word. So we got to match it to the picture. So you're going to go like this. See, I connected the word with the picture. Now it's our turn to do the next one. This is a brick. Say brick. Okay, look at the first word. Circle the special sound. It's brr. The R says brr. And the other special sound is CK says k, as in duck. So you should be circling two special sounds. Now, how many vowels are in that word? One. Mark it with the smile. Now, let's read the word. Brr, ik, brick. Hey, that looks like it matches, but we still need to do this one. So how many vowels are in that word? Two. The first vowel says the long sound. The second vowel is silent. 
Now we can read the word. B. I. T. Bite. Hmm. Which word matches the picture? The word brick matches with the word brick. So you draw a line. Okay, time to go to the next picture. What is that? It's a tire. Let's mark the vowels for this word. How many vowels? Two. So the first vowel says the long sound. The second vowel is silent. Now let's read the word t. Tire. Tire. <gasps> that looks like it's going to, that sounds like it's the right word. But we got to do the second one just in case. What is the special sound? Tur, circle, tur. T R says tur as in train. Now look, how many vowels are in this word? One. So you mark it with a smile. Just like that. Now let's read the word. Chur app trap. So we got the word tire and the word trap. Which one matches the picture? You're right, it's tire. So I draw a line. So you are going to do the rest on your own. You're gonna do paint, lamp, sheep, fox, bag, and the girl is waving. So wave. Let's do it again. Paint, lamp, sheep, fox, bag and wave. Actually, I'm going to do one more with you and then you'll do the rest on your own. So look at the picture. It's paint and look at the first word. How many vowels? One. Mark the A with the smile. It's the short A. And read the word. An pan. Is that a pan? No. Let's try the next one. How many vowels do you see? Two. So the first vowel says the long sound. The second vowel is silent. Now we can read the word. P Ain't. Paint. Let's read it again. Here we go. P Oops, sorry. P Ain't. Paint. That matches the picture paint. So you draw a line to match it. All right. I want you to do lamp, sheep, fox, bag, and wave on your own. Then you go to the back side. It says to fill in the bubble under the picture that begins with the special sound. So what is that special sound? BR says brr as in bride. Okay, let's say these pictures together. What is it? That's a broom. Hmm. Does broom begin with fur? Did you hear bur in broom? 
So you fill in the bubble. Because if you hear the special sound burr, then you have to fill in the bubble. Let's go to the next one. It's a brick. Hmm, let me say that slower. Brick. Brick. Does brick have fur in it? Yes. So we fill it in. Fill in the bubble. So we've got broom. We've got brick. Now the last picture is a boot. Let me see it slow. Boot. Boot. Hmm. Did you hear burr and boot? No, so we don't fill in the bubble. Let's do the next one. G R says grr as in grin. So G R says grr. Let's find two pictures that begin with grr. How about gas? Gas. Well, gas begins with g, but not grr. So we can't fill in that bubble. How about grasshopper? You say it. Grasshopper. Does grasshopper begin with grr? Grasshopper? Yes! When I said it slower and broke it up, I could hear the grr. So I fill in the bubble. GR says grr, and grasshopper begins with grr. Let's try the next one. It's the fruit grapes. Can you say that? Grapes. Did you hear grr in grapes? Yeah, let's sound it out. Make it slow. Grapes. Grapes. If you heard grr, then you do what? Fill in the bubble. So we've got grasshopper and grapes. What else begins with grr? It's not on here, but can you tell me something else that begins with grr? The color green or the word great or a grizzly bear. Let's say this special sound. S P says sp, sp, as in spade. Remember, you're digging with that shovel, sp. There are two pictures that begin with sp. You need to find them and fill in the bubble. For the two pictures that begin with sp. Then on the end, it says to write the vowel that completes each word. Vowels are a, E, I, O, U, A, E, I, A, 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 E, I, A, 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 E, I, A, A. These are the sounds of my short sound vowels. Okay, so the first picture is a bug. Let's sound out bug and try to find the vowel in the middle. Here we go. B. A. G. Again. B. A. G. Bug. What vowel was in the middle of bug? Was it a, e, i, a, or a? Yeah, it was a. So I circle a and write it on the line to complete the word. Bug. You are going to do the rest on your own 
It's mop, hat, and fish. Not all vowels will be used, but four of them will for mop, hat, and fish. When you're all done with this, you are going to have your parents take a picture of those sides and upload it to Google Classroom in the right tab. Okay, then it's time to write words that rhyme with B. B, B, B. Like the bee that buzzes from flower to flower collecting nectar. B. It's spelled like this. B, E, E. B. I'll draw a B too. Bees like to go to flowers because why? Because they need to make honey from nectar, and the nectar is found from the flowers. They also help pollinate lots and lots of plants. So bees are super important for us. So that's why I tell you guys not to kill the bees when we see them at recess because they actually help our earth. All right. B. Tell me some words that B that rhyme with B. Go ahead and tell me some words that rhyme with B. Mm -hmm. Wow. You thought of a lot. I heard tree, me, see. Let's write those words. Okay, tree. B, tree. Does it rhyme? Yeah. Let's write the word tree. Tr, special sound, T-R says tr, and then add two E's at the end. B, tree. It rhymes. Now I'm gonna draw a picture of a tree. The fruit of the spirit tree. B tree. What's another word that rhymes with B? Yeah, C. Oh, how do you spell the word C? S E E. It's a sight word we learned. C. B. Tree, C. I'm going to draw some eyes for C. C. Okay, so I did three or two with you. I want you to think of two more, write them out, and then draw the picture. So you're finding two more words that rhyme with. B. We've got tree, C, key. Yep, you can think of more. Good job. All right. Next, you're going to take out your math worksheet. This is math lesson 110A and 100. And B. So you'll see some cylinders. Remember we learned about the 3D shape cylinder? It has a circle on the bottom, a circle on the top, and two parallel lines. And you can fill cylinders with something. It can be filled in with like beans or canned corn or paint. In today's um, story, these are pencil cans, pencil cylinders. So they're gonna fill these cylinders with pencils. Like, look, I actually have a cylinder right here. Do you see? There's a circle on the bottom 
a circle on the top and I can fill stuff inside of it. That's the 3D shape cylinder. So go ahead to the 110A and write your name. While you're writing your name, I'm gonna get some more cylinders. Cylinders. So cylinders, there's all different kinds of shapes. We have 2D shapes, we have 3D shapes. 3D shapes are shapes that can be filled in with something. So this is another example of a cylinder. Because look, there's a circle on the top. There's a circle on the bottom and it's connected by two lines and something can go inside. There's space inside of this cylinder. It used to have wipes, like hand wipes in here, but nothing in here right now. Do I have a, oh, I have more cylinders. Look, I have a foam cylinder. There's a circle on the top a circle on the bottom and it's filled in with foam. The whole thing is filled with foam inside. Here's another cylinder. There's a circle on the top, a circle on the bottom, connected by two lines and there's nothing inside of here. It's completely, can you see me? M it's empty. What should we fill inside this cylinder? It needs something. Maybe it can be my scissor holder. All right, let's do one more cylinder. This one's a short one. All right, so we have a circle on the top. A circle on the bottom it's connected by two lines and this cylinder is filled in with wood this is a wooden block something you can play with and it's the shape of a cylinder cylinders also can roll do you see it rolling all these cylinders I showed you I could lay them down and roll them. All right, well, let's go back to our math worksheet and I'm gonna read you the story. It says, Mrs. Lackey, but you know what? I'm gonna use my name. Miss Kimura put pencils in cans. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put some pencils in these cans or cylinders. She put six green pencils in the first can. So that's the first one, remember, whenever we're identifying first, second, third, fourth, fifth, we don't start here, we start to the very, very left. So in the first can, I put six green pencils. So I want you to get your green crayon and draw six green pencils. Now I'm going to show you how to do them like sticks. You don't have to make a super fancy pencil. I just want you to draw six lines to represent the six pencils. Go ahead. Okay, so everyone drew six lines to represent the six pencils. Good. I'm going to continue reading the story. Then Miss Kimura put five red pencils in the second can. Okay, so get out your red crayon. And it says I put five red pencils 
in the second can. So if you count first, second. So please draw five red lines to represent the five pencils. So just to review, Miss Kimura put six green pencils in the first can, five red pencils in the second can. I wonder how many I'm going to put in the third can. Okay. It says Miss Kimura put four green pencils in the third can. Four. So get out your green crayon again and make four pencil lines. One, two, three, four. I am noticing a pattern. Are you? Okay, this is the pattern I'm noticing. Six pencils, five pencils, four pencils. Hmm. It seems like we're counting backwards. Six, five, four. What would be this one? Three. And then after three would come two. Oh, they're making a pattern. It's six, five, four, three, two. Now I notice another pattern. The colors of pencils are switching from red, green, red. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> green, red, green, red. Okay, let's see if we're right. It says Miss Kimura put three red pencils in the fourth can. So in the fourth can are three red pencils. Get out your red crayon and make three lines. We were right, guys. Look, six pencils, five pencils, four pencils, three pencils, and the right color, red, green, red green, red. Okay. Now it says, if the pattern continues, show how many pencils she will put in the last can and what color the pencils will be. So they're not telling us what Miss Kimura did for the last can. We have to figure out the pattern. Can you help me? Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the number on each can. I'm going to write six, five, four, three, like that, to represent how many pencils are in each can. You want to do that too? Go ahead. Okay, so they're saying for the last can, how many pencils would it be? And then what color of pencils. Well, if we keep going, six, five, four, three. Ready? Six, five, four, three, two. Write the number two. It's going to be two pencils. And what color pencils? Well, let me check the AB pattern. Green, red, green, red, green. So I'm going to draw, draw two green pencils. And then it says, how many pencils are in the last can? How many pencils are in the last can, class? What is it? How many pencils do you see right there? Yeah, just two. So I write the number two. There's six, five, four, three, two. 
just two. And then it's asking you what color are the pencils? What color did we color those pencils? Yeah, green. So instead of writing the word green, I'm just gonna color that crayon green. You see that crayon on the bottom? Okay, so how many pencils are in the last can? Two. What color are they? Green. You know what? Can you write the color green? G-R-E-E-N. G-R-E-E-N. I know how to spell green. G-R-E-E-N. All right, we're all done with this side. Now the back side you are gonna do on your own. I'm gonna read it to you while you draw them. And then you're gonna have to figure out what the last basket is going to have in it. So are you ready? I want you to take out your blue crayon and your yellow crayon. So please get out your blue and your yellow. Blue, yellow. Okay, are you ready? I'm gonna use Mrs. Gardner's name now. These are baskets that Mrs. Gardner is gonna fill with eggs. Easter eggs. So it says, Mrs. Gilbert, oops, <laughs> we actually have a PE teacher named Mrs. Gilbert, but I'm going to use Mrs. Gardner. Mrs. Gardner put plastic eggs in baskets. She put one yellow egg in the first basket. So get your yellow crayon and draw one yellow egg. Remember, eggs can just be these ovals. Look, just like that. Okay, in the second basket, she put two blue eggs. Get out your blue crayon and draw in the second basket two blue eggs. Go! So you should have two blue eggs. All right, in the third basket, she put three yellow eggs. Get out your yellow crayon and draw three yellow eggs in the third basket. Three yellow eggs. Go. Remember, these are not fancy eggs right now. Just quickly draw them. All right, you should have put three yellow eggs in the third basket. You know what, I am gonna do this with you. It'll be easier for you to see it. So I have two yellow, e blue, eggs in the second basket. See how quickly I did it? Okay, now on the in the fourth basket, what do you think it's gonna be? Yep, four blue eggs in the fourth basket. So draw four blue eggs. One yellow egg, two blue eggs, three yellow eggs, four blue eggs. Now, if the pattern continues, how many eggs are is Mrs. Gardner gonna put in the last basket? So, one, two, three, four, 
It's it's counting up, counting forward. One, two, three, four, five. So we definitely know there's gonna be five eggs in the last basket, but what color eggs will they be? Will they be yellow or blue? Let me see the pattern. Yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. So I'm gonna get my yellow crayon and draw five yellow eggs. Hard to see, but those are five yellow eggs. And then it asks you, how many eggs are in the fifth basket? How many eggs are in this fifth or last basket? Yeah, we said the number five. Down and around and give it a hat. And then it says, what color are those eggs? Yeah, they're yellow. Yellow eggs. Because it's the it's an A-B pattern of blue, yellow, blue, yellow, Blue, or sorry, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. I'm gonna write the word yellow. Y-E-L-L-O-W spells yellow. Y-E-L-L-O-W spells yellow. Like the early morning sun when the day has just begun. Y-E-L-L-O-W spells yellow. Did you see the pattern, boys and girls? The eggs kept, we kept adding one more egg to the basket. So we start off with one egg, then two eggs, three eggs, four eggs, five eggs. And then we made a, a, a yellow blue AB pattern. Yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. Okay, so when you're done with this, your mom and dad need to take a picture of it both sides and upload it to Google Classroom. We're almost done. All I want to do is read a little bit about baby caterpillars. This one says, hello, baby caterpillar. Hey, little ba says sorry, it says, hey, little caterpillar, how do you do? Where did you come from and whose baby are you? Wow, look at that caterpillar. Beautiful. It's orange and yellow with circles. Oh, and blue too. So a, before a butterfly can become a butterfly, it starts off as this little clear white egg. Then from the egg hatches a caterpillar. The caterpillars get bigger. They become a chrysalis. And the chrysalis turns into a butterfly. So this says, a caterpillar can look like a snake. Is a caterpillar a baby snake? No, but it sure can look like it, huh? This one says, a caterpillar can look like a lizard. Is a caterpillar a baby lizard? What do you think? Is that a lizard or a caterpillar? You know, it really does look like a lizard to me, but it's a caterpillar. God is so amazing in the different kinds of caterpillars he made. They all don't look the same. Oh, look at this one. A caterpillar can look like a hedgehog. <gasps> It does. Is a caterpillar a baby hedgehog? Wow, that's a lot of spikes or feathers on it, huh? They, oh, I love this one. It says a caterpillar can look like a bunny. Is a caterpillar a baby bunny? Look at the fur on that caterpillar. It has the fur of a bunny. Wow, I wonder what the name of that caterpillar is. It says, a caterpillar does not look like a butterfly. Is a caterpillar a baby butterfly? What do you think? That looks nothing like a butterfly, but is it 
a baby butterfly? Yeah. Yes. It changes so much. So the caterpillar went from this to this. It changes. That's how God created it. All right, I want to read this one next. It says, let's find out. Get close to caterpillars. Here's a hungry caterpillar. Munch, munch, munch. Look closely. What's the caterpillar eating for its lunch? What is this caterpillar eating for lunch? Is it a pickle? Is it a leaf? Or is it a green lollipop? <laughs> yeah, caterpillars love to eat leaves. I like to eat pickles and lollipops, but not caterpillars. This is a big one. Let's look at caterpillars. Look closely at this hungry caterpillar. It's eating a leaf. Munch, munch, munch. Look, look close. Oh, look, the sight word look. Look closely at this tricky caterpillar. It looks like a stick, and that's how it hides. Look closely at this crawling caterpillar. It arches its body to move. That one looks like the snake, huh? Oh, can I do it? Look closely at this prickly caterpillar. It has stingers on its body. Did you see that? This one has stingers to protect it from anybody that would eat it. Wow. And this one says, look closely at this juicy caterpillar. It's in the bird's mouth. Gulp. So who likes to eat caterpillars? birds. So that's why God made them have um, stingers to protect themselves and, and also help them blend in with the trees. It says, be a caterpillar scientist. When scientists observe something, they look at it closely. So the word observe means to look closely. See the magnifying glass? How are they the same and how are they different? So look at these two caterpillars. How are they the same? Mm -hmm. They look like they're the same length. They're both caterpillars. They both crawl to move. And how are they different? Well, one is red. One is green, one is skinny, one is a little bit more chunky, one has spikes on it, while the other has spots on it. I love how God created different kinds of caterpillars. And the last thing is, when a caterpillar changes into a butterfly, it's called metamorphosis. Can you say that? Meta morphosis. Metamorphosis. So the change from the egg to the butterfly is called metamorphosis. So the first stage of a caterpillar is hatching from the egg. See the clear egg? Then the caterpillar eats leaves and grows, then the skin hardens and it forms a chrysalis, and the very last life's, uh, the very last, last cycle is the butterfly comes out of the chrysalis and spreads its wings and flies. See the shell of the chrysalis? It doesn't need that anymore. It can fly. All right. We are all done for today. Let's sing our goodbye song. Goodbye to you. Goodbye to you.
goodbye, KB. Goodbye to you. Your turn. And Jesus loves you. And I love you. Bye, boys and girls.